Well, I'm a bit, I'm a bit late today. I did uh, stayed up till half past two last night editing footage. But uh, there are four police officers inside the Watford Junction station. Seems like there's more of a presence sort of happening. Uh, Going to get a cab up today, a chauffeur-driven limousine, because I'm a rich man now. So uh, wonder whether it's going to be a strange day. So, um, same people on the G4S um, stand like Jesus, Corden, uh, as they were yesterday. Today, they're a lot more tetchy. I used the word facetious, and then the G4S man just reflected that word straight at me, saying, maybe you're facetious. Which is great. It all looks fairly uh, standard, very normal, actually, as it was yesterday. There's uh, good old Steve Lee. Chief Liaison Officer, Sergeant Steve. Well, interestingly, there's actually a, a queue of people waiting to be scanned or magnetized as they come in here, which is quite funny. Um, it's about quarter past twelve, and uh, I've been rooting around asking lots of questions and uh, it's been announced that David Cameron is turning up today. Isn't that interesting? And uh, I find that highly suspicious. Apparently he's going to turn up between four and five, that's what we've heard. Some people say he's going to go around the back so he's not seen at all. I don't think that's true, I think he's going to come in the front. And I was watching that, um, was that that court case, one of the Woolwich guys, they took the armoured vehicle with all the, with the so-called suspect inside all the way around the front where there was loads of traffic i think just to be seen by all the press and i think david cameron's going to come through the front door just to be seen by all the press because i think this is a very very well crafted pr exercise so uh, it acts like there's nothing going on in that hotel behind me but there is something going on. Steve, if I may. How are you doing? British Transport Police Observer, I'm curious. He is what would in the old days. He was known as what's called a lay visitor. What we do is we have people that come along and kind of observe. Is it because they're worried about transport tomorrow with too many people turning no, up? No, he observes the police. It's not here to observe you lot, he's here to observe the police. The British um, Transport Police? Yeah, British Transport. These lads have been doing the, um, been down at the railway station at Watford Junction. Yeah. To sort of greet people and point them in the right I, direction. I saw them this morning, yeah. I think they've brought him up here just for a bit of a look around to show him what's going on because there's not a lot going on at the railway station. So show him a bit of, a bit of what's actually happening. Yeah, just for the do I look alright? It's very important for me. Look, do I look okay, Sophie? You're all good, gorgeous. Okay, good. Whoa, whoa, whoa! I'm ready now. <laughs> I don't have any Levi's. No. <laughs> yeah, I've got an upper phone. I love. I get a little kick out of it every time I get it out. Thank you for all the young Chinese children who had to slave to make it. It's kind of cute. Do you want some reverb on that? Do you want some reverb? 
Yeah, can you do you have a god setting that makes me sound like or do you have an Alex Jones setting? We've got a oh, flange. <laughs> It'll be very scared, everybody. Oh, what we're gonna do, they're horrible, we're okay, stick with us. And make sure you look at a lot of my films and buy all the stuff as well while you're right. Okay, well, what are you against? Um slavery. What are you for? Freedom, obviously. <laughs> Give me an E. No, I just want an E. Okay. Right, what about you with the camera? What's really going on? Uh, we've been manipulated by interdimensional entities. We've been manipulated by interdimensional entities. This is not the David Icke part. He's oh, coming later, sorry. I, I thought you were David Icke. No, I'm not David, I'm really sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Very but good. seriously, that is actually happening. That is actually happening. But interdimensional what? Entities. 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 It's very vague. Can you be a bit more specific? What are these people's names, for example? <laughs> Charlie Skelton. <laughs> So, uh, what are you hoping to uh, achieve here, given what's going on at them? It's been our job and our main goal just to expose their powerful lobbying groups and organizations like Bilderberg above government that are transnational that come in and basically lobby governments to uh, give them corporate bailouts, uh, to buy weapon systems. There's all sorts of collusion going on here. There were Lockheed Martin investigations in the 70s. That's why the founder, Prince Bernhard, had to step down. Uh, there's just all sorts of shady goings on, uh, price fixing, you name it. Over the years, via WikiLeaks, but uh, before that, even the BBC and others uh, broke a lot of news out of Bilderberg, where they were indeed uh, inside setting policy. And they've uh, refused Freedom of, uh, Freedom of Information Act request as well, saying that policy is being made. But then the Bilderberg Group separately says policy is not being made. The Bilderberg Group is basically a world shadow government. It is a uh, legendary organization within government, within people in Congress and your parliament. They all know about it. They all lust to be invited. Uh, because if you get invited here, you end up being president or prime minister. But then, meanwhile, they tell the public it doesn't exist. It's, it's, well, it exists. well it, it, in the past, the New York Times, just four years ago, said that I was in Chantilly at a Bilderberg meeting covering it, and that it was imaginary, that I imagined helicopters and uh, Secret Service and black vehicles. Well, some very grand populism going on behind us. Um, Alex Jones talking to Channel 4 News, and just about everyone, they're about to put him on a little boat and take him on a little boat ride down the uh, canal. I've been talking to my new best friend who is called, um, he's Sergeant Steve Lee, the Chief Liaison Officer. He's promised me he's going to take uh, a few of us on tour of the security base down at the uh, rugby club. He said there's a helicopter parked in the middle of a rugby field, which I want to get a picture of. Uh, I'm keeping my eyes out. It's a very complicated, very chaotic scene. Sort of people everywhere doing their own thing milling around, most, most of them hanging around outside, um, around um, Alex Jones, of course. But uh, I tell you, something is afoot. 
Well, the point being then is, you know, you've all chosen your clothes with effortless choice this morning. You're sitting here effortlessly and unashamed with your hairstyle, facial hair, clothes, all the rest of it. But what about the rest of the story of your uniqueness? The story of your unique voice, your unique interpretation, the things that your life experience has yielded only you. Where is your courage, your tenacity and your uh, application of that? That's what I look to encourage because that is the truth of your unique kind of divine manifest presence here. Every one of you is here by a divine mandate of birth. You were dreamt forth by the universe for a specific purpose that is yours and yours alone. As long as we're standing there giving credit to somebody else's rubbish story of humanity that doesn't lead anywhere, then your amazing co-creative powers of the now are being exploited to tell somebody else's story. I can't see Alex Jones, but I can see a performing monkey. Oh no, oh no, that's Paul Joseph Watson. No, Alex Jones is standing on top of it with a bullhorn. And Silky Carlo's on there as well. The boat is called Pickles Folly. Is that relevant, do you think? Well, I have to say, it's um, feeling a little bit more festively. It's uh, the sun's gone in and it's starting to rain, which is absolutely amazing. Rain is amazing, sun is evil. If you sunburn quite easily, like I do. And you're stuck in a FEMA camp in a field. Um, people are blowing up balloons. Uh, Speaker's Corner over there, the place where the condemned speak, isn't actually a place where the condemned are speaking right now, it's where some actually really cool people who are into legalese and uh, freemanism and words and the manipulation of society are speaking. It's great. Of course, it's because it's the Friday, come the Saturday, you get all the big names like Alex Jones, David Icke. Um, when I first left uni, I used to work for a company that did habitat surveys and we used to do surveys for bats and lizards. The United Kingdom actually filled with tiny, tiny little lizards. They're the smallest lizards you can imagine. And the hill that is over there, we used to make and plan artificial versions of those because that is the natural habitat of um, lizards in the United Kingdom. They're tiny, tiny, really tiny little things. But that is in fact a lizard hill. And strange things are going on. I can't remember I've mentioned it before, but I don't think I have. They're bringing in a big pyramid tomorrow to put next to the Lizard Hill. And that's where David Icke's going to speak, and that's where Alex Jones is going to speak. It's all very strange. Now, David Cameron's going to be turning up in about, well, whenever from now. Um, I'm going to miss it. I had to make a decision because my new best friend, Sergeant, Sergeant Steve Lee, is taking me and some people from the UK column down to the rugby club where the helicopters live and where the security operation is running from and they told me I'm not allowed to film but I can take still photographs and I figure that it's only because I'm so I'm best buddies with the police around here that they are taking and allowing me to go down there everyone's going to be filming David Cameron I'm going to be filming helicopters and um, I can get pictures of uh, other people's pictures of David Cameron later on. So I'm walking up now to meet my chief liaison officer, and uh, he's gonna, gonna put me in a police van. And I did, I did informing that this is how, you know, preemptive political arrest happens. They just say, just we're just gonna take you somewhere nice to show you some nice things. Now get in the back of the van. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. It's because I trust people.